Hello and welcome to another episode of Center Stage with ICS Theatre. I'm your host Anahita Mantri with a very special show for you today. Today we have with us a leading persona of avant-garde theatre in India, Mr. Amol Palekar. We all know Amol Palekar for his simple boy next door charm in films like Chit Chod, Rajni Gandha, Choti Si Baat, Baato Baato Me, and above all, Golmar. But Mr. Palekar's journey into the performing arts started long before that in Marathi and Hindi theatre since 1967. Following in the footsteps of Satya Dev Dubeji, Mr. Palekar became one of the pillars of the Chabil Das theatre movement, which presented offbeat parallel theatre inside a small school hall in central Mumbai. After his noteworthy performance in the play Chup Kot Chalu Hai in 1968, followed by Mohan Rakesh's Abhi Adhure and Girish Karnar's Hai Vandana, he soon turned to directing with Badal Sarkar's Vallab Kurchi Danta Katha, and there was no turning back after that. As an actor par excellence, he ruled the silver screen for over three decades. He was just as comfortable with serious roles as he was with very poker-faced comedy timing. He carved an unparalleled niche for himself in contrast to the larger-than-life hero personas of that time he received several film fare and state awards he earned tremendous critical acclaim for his work in marathi bengali malayalam and kannada films as well while the popularity of his films made him a household name by the mid 80s he was not one to stay basking in that glory for long he turned to directing again and gave the audience his gems with tv shows like kachi dhoop and movies like kheri daira paheli and many more In recent years he has turned his focus back to the fine arts which was his first calling and has held several solo exhibits of his paintings in India and in the US often donating his work to various causes he feels passionately about In 2012 he was awarded the Vishnu Das Bhave Puraskar in 2016 Savitri Bai Phule Pune University bestowed upon him the lifetime achievement award In 2017 Rabindranath Bharti University Kolkata conferred DLit and recently in 2018 he was awarded the prestigious Godavari Sanman for his contribution to the field of art I could go on and on about his achievements and accolades but I think we should keep the majority of our time for our conversation with the indomitable personality that is Amol Palekar Welcome to our show, Amol Ji. How are you today? Good. First of all, let me tell you how honored I feel to have this opportunity to speak with you today, and it's a great privilege for ICS Theatre also to be able to bring this to their audience here. Now, I'll get right to the questions because I don't want to waste any more time of yours. Um, So you say that you are an actor by accident. Uh, you were a fine arts student at uh, Sir J J School of Arts in Mumbai when you first met uh, Shri Satya Dev Dubey ji. How did your career path change from that point on? Um, well, it was uh, it was a sheer accident because I started. I had seen uh, Dubey's production of Yayati. that was girish karnad's first play and uh, dubey had done uh, sorry to call him dubey dubey but that's <laughs> how we were so close that i there were two persons in my life much senior to me and absolutely great contributors to theater one was dubey and another was danu kenkre both of them i was privileged to call them uh, as a and not with g <laughs> uh, so i had seen dubey's production um, starring uh, 
I mean, almost every top personality in uh, theater at that mm -hmm. time. And when I say theater, uh, there was, of course, Amrish Puri as Yayati, oh, then uh, Tarla Mehta from Gujarati mm -hmm. theater. She was a huge star uh, just to, for the younger generation to know. Tarla yeah. was the younger sister of uh, Dina Ben. Mm -hmm. In fact, these three sisters, all three sisters, Shantaben, Dina Ben, and Tarla, have made a, one of the great impacts on Gujarati theater and Hindi theater. So Tarla was there, then Sulubha Deshpande was there. Uh, and uh, in that play, they had cast a young girl called Chitra Murudeshwar. Mm -hmm. I was uh, kind of dating Chitra at that time. Mm -hmm. So uh, I used to go to uh, the rehearsals and hang around there. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was, uh, it was one of those uh, after the rehearsal, Dubey suddenly asked me that, would you like to act in my play? Mm -hmm. And before I could answer, before, before I could even open my mouth, he, in his typical uh, Dubesque manner, yeah. he said that, please don't be under the impression that I have found some great talent in you <laughs> or I see some very <laughs> bright future of uh, acting talent, etc., etc. It's just that I have seen you have a lot of time on hand and you're just wasting it. Why don't you come and use it a little in a better way. So that's how I became an actor. <laughs> I had no connection with theater. I yeah. had no training in theater. And this was in 1967 that I acted in uh, Chup Kor Chalu Hai, Tendulkar's uh, famous play Shantata Kor yeah. Chalu Hai, Silence the Court is in session. Uh, yeah. At uh, theater unit that is Dubey's uh, group. Mm -hmm. They did it in Hindi and mm -hmm. uh, it was directed by Sulba Deshpande, produced okay. by Satyadev Dubey and in which I played one of the roles. Interestingly enough, uh, Dubey also made a film on that in a Marathi film, Shantata Kod Saluai, that also was my debut in films, uh, people only know uh, about Rajni Ganda and all, which happened much later. Yeah. Uh, this my debut, Shantata Kod Saluai. And uh, that's how my career as an actor began. Amazing. It was, and we are so lucky to have that. I, I don't know about that, but uh, <laughs> I, was, I was privileged. Uh, to be trained by Dubey. And when mm -hmm. I say trained, it was genuinely after the first play. Uh, I still remember there was a review in uh, Times of India mm -hmm. in which my name was mentioned in one line that uh, it said that uh, Amol Palekar with his suave performance. Mm -hmm. And uh, I rushed to Dubey and I said, what is the meaning of suave? I didn't know. <laughs> so he said, wo acha wo, uh, Times of India ka review padke pooch rahe ho. Don't take all that seriously. Now that you have acted in, now let us start the proper training as an actor. And that's how, when I did my second play, Suno Jan Major by Adhya that was directed by Dubey. And uh, that's when he really trained me. Trained me, taught me ABC of acting, everything. And I'm talking of those days. Uh, we were privileged to be trained like that because we never used mics in theater. Mm. And without shouting and screaming, yeah. how to project your voice right till the balcony or to the last row. Yeah. We were 
trained into that. And to be able to stand up and act with giants like Amrish Puri and Dina Pathak, all these people, Tarla Mehta, all these people was, that itself was a training by itself. In fact, yeah. I, I still remember uh, when we did Hayavadan, again, another play by, uh, classic by Girish Karnad. Girish Karnad, yes. Uh, Amrish Puri, Sunila Pradhan, and Dina Patak. This was the star cast. And it was a huge success. Mm. When we started the rehearsals, I was I was so scared to be able to stand up to Amrish Puri and make my presence felt or meaningful. I didn't know how to do that. So I rushed again to Dubai and I said, uh, how do I do that? My God, he's such a towering personality with such a booming voice and so much of experience in theater. Yeah. How, how do I even stand up to this man? Hmm. So then he again, he said, don't worry. You don't have that voice. You don't have that physique. So why worry about all that? Think about what are your strengths? What can be done? How? And then he taught me uh, the nuances of uh, uh, spoken word, how to get meaning out of spoken word, etc., etc. All that. And then I was able to stand up and do a pretty good job, I must say. Amazing. What a lovely story that was. <laughs> that was great. Now, uh... You say also that you are a director by choice and people know some of the films, of course, that you have directed in the recent past. And um, But not a lot of people know that you actually started directing very early in your career for theater, all the way back in 1969. And by 86, when your career was actually at its peak, you took the decision to, in fact, um, focus more on uh, filmmaking. So what was your motivation to do this? Uh, this was, again... Uh... Dubey's uh, Kartut, as I would say. <laughs> <laughs> I had started my career, as I said, in 67. Mm -hmm. uh, incidentally, that also happens to be the year when I had my first uh, solo exhibition of paintings. So 67 means uh, quite a lot to me because I made my debut as, as an artist, as a painter, I made my debut as an actor, and it was in 68 that I made my debut in films as an actor. But coming back to this direction part of it, it was Dubey who, who said, this was in just after two years, and I had barely done, I still, still get amazed. I had barely done just three plays with him, all with him. Yeah. Uh, um, Shantata ko chup ko chalu hai, suno jand mein jai, and adhya duri by Mohan Rakesh. After that, he said, uh, there is a playwright called Badal Sarkar. Uh, why don't you read this play, his play, Bolla uh, Pure Rupakatha, since you know Bengali also, please read, or there is a Hindi translation available. And let's do that in Marathi. So I, I read that play and it was a very lovely, simple, situational comedy. Lovely play by Badalba. So I translated that. And uh, while translating again, I, I found it very, very interesting that uh, the original title of the play is Vallabhpure Rupokatha. Vallabhpur ki Rupkatha. While translating it, I made that Rup Katha into Danta Katha. Hmm. Now, Danta Katha has uh, so many shades, but it is, I found it very interesting that since the hero Bhupati is also a dentist, I thought that ah. it, <laughs> it, it made, a, it added a little fun, more fun, fun to, to it. that. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, I, I did the translation. And I gave it to Dubey. Uh, 
He said, no, don't give it to me. You have to direct it. Uh, I said, I don't know anything about direction. He said, so what? Uh, you didn't know anything about acting. Now you have you are started acting. So mm -hmm. similarly, start doing this. And what is the worst that can happen? You'll fall flat on the face, which is okay. Come on, go ahead and direct it. That's how I directed my first play way back in 1969. And uh, that's where my journey began. But talking about direction, yeah. I must also say that a great thing that uh, Dube taught me, not directly, but I learned from his activities and his uh, actions and his approach to theater was something that interpretation of the script, that's where the director comes in. I had, uh, I had seen Badaldas Evam Indraji in Hindi, done by Shamanan Jalan, another doyen uh, in Hindi theater. He used to perform in Kolkata. And I had seen his production of that. And it was just mind-blowing, absolutely mind-blowing production. And uh, when I told Dubey about it, he said, just wait. I am going to do that play in Hindi again. And then you will see a different interpretation of that. I couldn't understand how can there be a different interpretation of the same play when the, the words are the same, the script is the same. What? And when Dubey did his production, I could see how a different interpretation can make the script totally different. Just to give you an idea, uh, Shamanan's uh, production had the playwright as the protagonist of the play. That's how it is written, the original play, Eva Mindrachi. The playwright, there is a character called playwright, and it's his journey. He wants to write, I mean, the just a one-liner could be, he says, I want to write a significant play. But... How I, I hardly know the life. I come from a middle class, uh, um, I mean, which is so boring and uninteresting, middle class life. I don't know anything about uh, uh, India. I don't know anything about uh, fishermen. I don't know anything about farmers. How can I write a play? And this is his journey, trying to find a significant play. So the playwright was the protagonist. When Dubey did the production, the protagonist was Indraji. The title of the play is Evam Indraji, which means and also Indraji. So it is about actually Amal, Vimal, Kamal and Indraji. He is as, uh, uh, what can we say, as, as common as Amal Vimal Kamal. Hmm. Now, even by uh, those names, you can see that they are so common, so similar sounding and all. And Indrajit and also Indrajit. But in Dubey's production, Indrajit became the protagonist. And in my God, it is, I still get goosebumps remembering that. Uh, it was such a different interpretation of the same script. Now, this is what, what I learned from the way, how to interpret the same words and same lines and what, as, an, as a director, you can find in that script, which is your own perception. So that's how I became a director. The Good part of this, my uh, director story is when I uh, directed Vallapurchi Dantakatha, I it swept, uh, there used to be, even now there is a very major event in Maharashtra called Annual State Drama Competition. And which is uh, everybody worth his salt, his or her salt, participates in that competition. I mean, I remember 
when i was a youngster at, at the time of vallapurji uh, dantakatha all the big wigs like vijay mehta and arvind desh pande and sulva desh pande and all all people used to participate in that state competition and standing in front of them vallapurji uh, dantakatha swept all the awards in that year amazing best production best direction best actor best actress all all i mean you name it and all so i suddenly developed a kind of a little aura around my name that oh here is a young director who who won against all these big wigs my god he must be something good so that was a big advantage to me and i went on uh, directing further as you mentioned uh i uh, i went on directing plays and at the very peak of my popularity in cinema i must say this because the younger generation is not aware of that in fact young generation sorry to say this but is not aware anything beyond google and wikipedia so <laughs> and there is also uh, of course uh, in theater the very hardly anything is preserved particularly from parallel theater movement or parallel cinema movement what right. we keep talking about are the commercial successes yes. we keep celebrating shole and we keep celebrating dilwale dulhaniya le jayenge which is of course we are all proud of that but at the same time what was happening in parallel cinema movement or what was happening in parallel theater movement there is hardly any record so uh, i was i was probably i can say uh, i was at my creative best hmm. when i was at the peak of my popularity as a film actor i kept on doing theater and i did not do any mainstream theater i mm-hmm. only did experimental plays i only did what is called as parallel uh, theater movement yes. and i went on doing it because that's what i uh, i really wanted to do and i kept on doing that right uh, you you i think you asked me a question about how how did this change happen particularly in films did you yeah. add that uh, yeah okay. like you were focusing on uh, films as, at that time and i think you did kind of uh, partly answer my question because you you but were, is, you were doing the films a, but parallelly also uh, you kept directing there is there is an incident which i i remember very clearly yeah when when i made my first film as a director that was called akri in marathi yeah, yeah. which was in year 1980 uh again i i played a absolute rogue villain in that and which was the protagonist of the film which was unheard of unheard of i mean yeah. hero has to be the protagonist how can villain be the protagonist so that was a big experiment which we did and i had produced that uh, film and directed also but after that when i did ankahi ankahi was again based on a play by one of the foremost playwrights in marathi called ct khanolkar mm-hmm. uh, based on his play when i was directing that film i myself realized that my whole attention even when i was performing my attention was whether the trolley movement is going correct whether that light is correct on my uh, leading lady's uh, face whether yeah. i am casting a shadow on her face etc etc and which i realized that this the director in me is becoming so uh prominent or overpowering that yeah. i am neglecting myself as an actor and probably which is not fair not fair to 
the actor in me and not fair to the audiences also. Because right. if I don't pay attention to my role or my character and my whole focus is on how Deepthi is performing, whether this is correct or not, how Devika is performing, how Dr. Lagu is performing, how Dina Ben, how Anil Chatterjee is performing, all, all those things, my entire focus used to be on that. So right. that's when I that's when I said that in that case, let me concentrate on direction and not on acting because that is what I find it more fascinating. And in any case, I'm paying more attention to that. So let me go on with that. <laughs> now, uh, again, uh, keeping with that uh, little bit of uh, that topic, uh, Bengali theatre and specifically the Bahurupi organization and Shombu Mitra's ideology, Sripti Mitra's work in theatre, all of those things have had a great impact on you. And that has, you know, um, kind of in a way maybe molded your theatrical career to an extent. Tell us a little bit about that, how the Bengali theatre influence came. Um, first and foremost, I must, this is uh, what you mentioned is half a truth. Uh, it was, it was, of course, Shambhu, I had the privilege to sit at his feet, Shambhuda's feet, yeah. and with Tripti Di in mm -hmm. a uh, Bengali film. Uh, but I had absolute privilege when I used to go to Kolkata, I used to go and spend hours with him, discuss things, and he allowed me all the stupid questions to be raised very, very affectionately and very fondly. But he gave me a perspective, particularly what is the strength of the theatre and what is the difference between theatre and films. This is what I learned from Shambhudan. But I must say that uh, a bigger influence on me was Badal Sarkar. Okay. Badal Da, in no uncertain ways, I can say that is one of the finest and biggest influences in my life, in my creative journey. I still think that Eva Mindrajit was a path breaking, path -breaking theater uh, production or path breaking play itself. So many, uh, I mean, people like Girish Karnad have also acknowledged that they, they said that, oh my God, I didn't know that theater could be in, uh, presented in this manner. Hmm. Uh, till then, what we knew was a kind of uh, theater, narrative, linear theater. And Badalda came up with a script, which is, uh, which is a collage of different scenes, uh, traveling in space, back and forth. And you know, it, was, it was simply fascinating. I still think it is one of the classics in Indian theater. And my only regret is that I could never do that play because the influence of Shamanan's production and uh, Dubey's production were so strong on me that I could never think of doing something different than those. But that is my, my regret. But Padalda, apart from being a fascinating playwright, then he moved away from the um, Ibsenian theater format, which we, we had followed, or even today, we greatly follow that in theater. He was the one who came up with his third theater uh, theory. And uh, you must, uh, as a youngster, all of you must read that book, The Third Theater, to understand what a different way of looking at theater this man gives. So all these things, those, those influences, uh, I think made me much richer, I would say. And it was also that influence of Badalda. I remember uh, during emergency, Badalda was performing a play 
in uh, what i mean it was it was uh, not even it was a huge park i still remember that performance i when i arrived at that uh, space i was shocked i said how can one perform here uh, there was a uh, heavy traffic trucks and all going with horns blaring away and the uh, uh, famous tram of calcutta that was passing re at regular intervals etc etc and then when the performance started i remember as an audience i had already filtered out all that and there was no sound which was disturbing me my only focus as an audience was on what was being performed there now this one uh, kind of experience and then there was another very interesting thing which happened because it was during emergency suddenly halfway through the performance police came there and police on horseback which is a very scary sight about 10 uh, uh, horsemen the policemen came and surrounded the audience and they were there i was so perturbed i said now there is something going to happen they are either going to start lati charge or arrest us or whatever then i noticed that nobody else from the audience even bothered to look at them they were not disturbed they were not worried i was the only stupid one doing that <laughs> then after about 5 minutes they just saw what was happening and they went went away the performance was not stopped performance went on now this absolute power and strength of theater adil da taught me and this is where my journey where i uh, i experimented a lot with alternate spaces i i brought uh, marathi theater i can uh, duly take the credit for that i brought uh, theater from the auditorium out and we started performing it was uh, it was in 1973 that yeah. i did my first play which was outside the proscenium arch and yeah. then we went on exploring i mean unheard of uh, spaces like yes. somebody's garage uh, 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 uh in yeah, between a lot of cafeterias gardens terraces yes. everywhere we performed in lic canteen we performed yeah. in a, a fire of a, a fire of a hospital mm -hmm. all all kinds of things we performed yeah. and that was such an exciting challenge to deal with a different space mm -hmm. and deal with the problems arising out of a different space right. where where would the audience be whether they would be on all four sides or they would be on three sides unlike in proscenium you, they are only opposite each other and there we imagine the fourth wall and that's how the uh, our entire framework of theater is now breaking that and going out of that and exploring i mean i am talking of uh, time when even street theater wasn't hadn't come into existence so to explore all these things was something uh, very very exciting and i i did that to to the hilt as my yeah. protest against emergency when i did again badalda's play called julus julus we perform anywhere and everywhere at almost every nook and corner of not only bombay and pune but we went on to perform even outside uh, maharashtra we went and performed that and that was uh, our very little protest against the emergency amazing just it's just so wonderful to hear all these stories <laughs> now um as a director again uh, you have you 
you have especially been known for a very sensitive portrayal of women in your stories, a very perceptive handling of uh, some very progressive issues, sometimes controversial issues. And you're always um, exploring options and depicting very simple, unconventional female characters uh, who are challenging the societal norms and they're somehow rising above their conflict. Now, where do you draw this inspiration for all of your female characters? It, it is from the women in my life who have inspired me, starting from my mother. Mm -hmm. My mother was a very strong woman. Uh, my father had to undergo an operation at a very young age, uh, and that operation failed. So he had to have a second operation immediately. But his health deteriorated so much that he had to take an early retirement. And this I'm talking about uh, uh, 1950s, late 50s. At that time, my mother took up a job and she brought up the entire family entirely on her own very frail shoulders. Now, such a strong woman I have seen carry out what was uh, considered a man's job to run the family single-handedly and very capably. For me, to after my uh, schooling, after my SSC, uh, I went straight to JJ School of Art. Now, that was another uh, uh, very uh, shocking uh, thing to my teachers and my uh, colleagues and everybody because there were only known options like uh, at our times, it was go going to arts was the first option, going to science was the second option, and going to commerce was the kind of uh, an option which agar ye dono jage nahi hota to fir commerce kar lo kind of a thing i chose not to go on that path at all i went to jj school of art and that to fine arts not commercial art fine arts now for my mother and father to support me was uh, i mean when i look back even today i am simply amazed and overwhelmed that they were so progressive and they gave me all kinds of freedom to be able to choose whatever I wanted to do, whatever I genuinely felt like doing, I must pursue that. This was the strength given by my mother, then my elder sister, then my wife, my ex-wife, my current wife, Sandhya's contribution, has been immense in whatever. In fact, uh, out of the 15 films that I have done, seven films have been written by Sandhya. Very few people know about that. But I'm just to mention, uh, even your eyebrows will go up. Sandhya <laughs> has written. Wow. Sandhya has written the script of Paheli. Ah, amazing. And. I will very proudly say that not one word from that script was changed by Shah Rukh as a producer. There was no, no request. He said, this is the script and we will do this. I am in love with this script. So all these women have given me immense strength. Uh, perspective. So I have never looked at women as something uh, certainly not inferior to men. They are on equal status to me. Sometimes I feel that they are better. Women are better than men. This I genuinely feel. <laughs> In fact, uh, <laughs> just a side thing, I was one of the very few directors who used to have all female as his assistants. Ah. They are not only hardworking, they are so focused and they are 
So, I mean, they are born to do multitasking. Women do it so easily. We men yeah. are idiots in that. We do. We are. <laughs> we are nowhere in comparison. But uh, jokes apart. So, this is what I found, and I started. Initially, it wasn't a very conscious effort, but then I realized that I am looking for a female protagonist who has the courage to stand up and do something even if it is not acceptable. You see any of my film, any of my film, all the women in my film have a very strong character and that is, that's the easy to understand why my films uh, are not part of mainstream yeah because mainstream has a format where the uh, it it has to be the hero who does no wrong and who can fight all evil but it is him and it is only the uh, most of the most of our films the female characters are only part of decoration i don't yeah, i don't in distress <laughs> I don't look at women like that. And that's all. I must, I must say that I was also very, very fortunate and privileged to be able to do all these experimentations, whether in theater or whether in films, on my own terms, without falling into the pattern of mainstream demands or mainstream formats. And uh, I could do it. I feel very very privileged and proud. That's wonderful. And we are so fortunate to have somebody like you who has given us such beautiful uh, gems. Um, anyway, thank you so much for joining us today, Amulji. Uh, we really appreciate the time you have given us. And the next time you are in the US, ICS Theatre would love to meet with you in person and have another chat. We can have a personal tete-a-tete. -tete. <laughs> And which would be hopefully more interesting and more exciting. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you so much. And now, folks, it is time for our theater fun fact of the day, which is a tiny bit of a history lesson. During the tumultuous pre independence times, the Indian People's Theater Association was formed by a group of like minded theater stalwarts to culturally enlighten the masses. Within a few years, the IPTA was systematically brought to a standstill by the government. Yet some of its members took forward IPTA's vision and carried on the struggle through different related organizations. Bahurupi was one such organization, which was founded by Shobhu Mitra and Vijayan Bhattacharya. Many of the contemporaries of those times wanted to use theater as a tool to promote cultural and political awareness, which was the need of the hour, of course. However, Shobhuda's vision was to practice theater for the sake of art, and he did not believe in necessarily propagating theater as a political tool. Bahurupi has been creating exceptional Bengali plays since 1948. Through the years, Shobhuda, Bijonda, along with Rupti Mitra, Kumar Roy, and Tapas Sen tirelessly pursued to uplift and experiment with Bengali theater, and their contribution to Bengali theater is priceless. The dedication and the perseverance of its members have been incredible, and we will forever be indebted to them for their influence on Indian theater, even today. That's it for today's episode. I'm your host, Anaita Mantri, signing off, and I'll see you next time on Center Stage with ICS Theatre. Until then, please take care and support the arts. Thank you all for watching and have a great night.